So this is chapter six, lesson three, binomial and geometric random variables. Um, so what I want you to keep in mind as you watch this video as we go through this lesson is what is the difference between a binomial random variable and a geometric random variable? And how can each of those be used to determine the probabilities of specific outcomes that require those situations? So first, a binomial random variable, it counts the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. Um, so a couple ways we could do it, uh, counting the number of times something occurs in a random sample from the population, like the number of defective CDs from a shipment uh, in a sample size of 10 from a shipment of 10,000 CDs. So, and this is an interesting case because once you pull one sampling without replacement, the trials aren't independent, it changes the probability, but it only changes it slightly, so we can act as if they're independent. Another question we want to look at is how small of a sample can we have and still be sure that it's an accurate representation of the population. So keep that in mind. Let's go over what a binomial random variable is. So it's going to arise when we have several independent trials of the same chance process and record the number of times that a particular out outcome occurs. Um, so we're recording a number of times in a fixed number of trials. So the four requirements, remember BINs, B-I-N-S, binary, bi meaning two, so two possible outcomes. The success of each trial can only be success or failure. There can't be anything else, two outcomes, success or failure, independent. Uh, the outcome of one shouldn't affect the outcome of another. Now, if we have a large sample, like we were just talking about, like 10,000, and we're pulling 10 out, um, the probability is so close that a lot of the times when we look at those problems, we're going to treat them as if they're independent. Um, so if it's uh, really close like that, you'll say that the probabilities are so close that it is, um, they're close to independent. Number, N for number is the number of trials of the chance process must be fixed in advance. You can't change the number as you go. You have to say how, what the number is gonna be before you start, and success. The probability P of success, successes must be the same on each opportunity, which has to do with uh, being independent as well. So uh, the I and the S kind of run over each other a little bit. They're kind of redundant, but um, they're a different way of saying the same thing. So every time we Go to see if we can use a binomial formula or one of those things here. You're going to check for these four first. Bins. Binary, independent, fixed number of trials, same number of success on each. Check those before any calculation. If you're ever stuck and you don't know what to do, either in our class on a problem or on the AP test, think, is this a binomial distribution? Does bins apply? Because it's a frequent mistake uh, that occurs, and it's one that you could uh, avoid if you know how to use those formulas. So if you're ever unsure uh, how to answer a question, check to see if it's a binomial uh, setting. So we're counting x successes in a binomial setting. So that's the number of successes of what x is going to represent. Our prob probability distribution of x is going to have parameters n, n is the number of trials, and p, uh, where p is the probability of success on any one trial. So x would be the number of successes, N is the number of total trials. P is the probability of success on each trial. Um, the possible values of X are the whole numbers from 0 to N, um, meaning the number of successes is either 0 or it could, the maximum is the total number of trials if there's a success on every one. Let's look at binomial coefficient. So feel free to refer to page 388, which shows you how to go through this on your, on your calculator. So, here uh, we have the binomial coefficient. It tells us the number of ways of arranging k successes among n observations. Since, for example, if we have three coin flips, two successes could be the first two or the last two, there'd be two ways of arranging it. So we often will say n choose k for this. n being the number of observation, k being the number of successes, and then we, we plug in our numbers here for that in order to solve the number of ways in which an outcome occur can occur. So this lets us know how many combinations, so in this example here, for 5 choose 2, this lets us know that in 5 total trials, um, there's 10 different ways that we could, so in this case it's 10, there's 10 different ways that we could have 2 successes in 5 trials. Uh, you could write this out too. You know, just write out all the sample space and the possible combinations, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and, and go on like that. But this is a much easier way to do it, especially now that you hopefully understand that. Also, keep in mind it's not related to the fraction five over two. Uh, Tech Corner on 388 will help you do this with your calculator. So um, for binomial probability on 389, this has the Tech Corner for doing it on your calculator. 
um, with n trials and probability of p of success on each trial, um, our possible values are 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n for k. That's the number of successes. Um, so this is the way we figure it out. We use our formula before, the number of ways of arranging those number of successes, and we multiply it out by probability times 1 minus the probability. Remember, n is the number of trials, k is the number of successes. So p would be the probability, um, little p is the probability of success on each trial. So n minus k. Um, so here's some helpful shortcuts. You should learn how to do all of these for this chapter because it'll make all your problem solving much easier uh, for using n choose k on your calculator. Binomial PDF, uh, we're going to use that when x equals a specific value. Binomial CDF, we're going to use that when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to a specific value. So pause right now, go to page 388 and 389 to go over that because it'll make all your work easier on tests and homework and everything else. For mean and standard deviation of a binomial, binomial random variable, um, if we want the mean, we look at the number of successes times the probability of success. That will tell us our expected value or how many expected successes we have uh, we would expect in n trials. And then our standard deviation is going to be given by uh, this formula, square root of the quantity np times the quantity 1 minus p. Um, remember that this is that this, these two formulas, this is only for binomial distributions. It can't be used for other distributions, so check bins. That it's binary, you know, success or failure are the only options. Independent are the trials, uh, the fixed number of trials, and the probability of success on each one is the same, or very, very close to the same. So, uh, speaking of that, the sampling without replacement condition. When we're taking an SRS of size n, small n, from a population of size capital N, so that would mean our total population would represent capital N. Our sample would be the small n, the number we're taking. We can use it to model the count of successes as long as, as n is less than or equal to one-tenth of n. So as long as we're taking less than 10% of the total population, we can use a binomial distribution to model the count of successes in the sample. Otherwise, we can't. Okay, so that's the sampling without replacement condition, that our sample has to be less than 10% of the total population. Um, another thing to keep in mind is we're not going to be looking at normal approximations for binomial distributions as they're not on the AP test. So we're um, not going to be focusing on that. It won't be on our tests. So that's binary and binomial, uh, and binomial setting. Now let's take a look at uh, geometric setting. So geometric setting, um, it, it we count the number of trials that it takes to get a success. And that'd be a geometric random variable, y here in this case. So we're just counting the number of trials needed to achieve just one success. Whereas before, we were taking a whole number of trials and counting the total number of successes. Here, we're just counting up until we get one success. So if it's free throw shooting and you have 10 and you're shooting, you would count. You miss the first, you miss the second, make the third. Then your value would be three because it took you three trials to get one success. So just like a binomial setting, binary is the first requirement. Um, each trial can be classified as success or failure. Independent, the trials must be independent. Knowing the result of one shouldn't have an effect on another. Um, trials, the goal, is, the goal is to count the number of trials until the first success occurs. So that's where the difference is here between binomial and geometric. Is that here we're counting the number of trials it takes to get one success. In, the, in binomial we're counting the total number of successes k in n number of trials so we're looking for a total number of set trials here we're, here we don't know the number of trials we're just going until we have one success and the probability p of success must be the same on each one so here's the difference between geometric and binomial something to really um, get a get a handle on so um, possible values of y would be whole numbers so 0, 1, 2, or not 0, sorry, 1, 2, 3. There has to be at least 1 because we're waiting until we get success on one trial. Um, so you'd have to have at least one trial to get one success. If, if your value of your geometric random variable is 5, that, mean it took you, that would mean that it took you 5 trials to get one success. So if it was shooting free throws, you'd be 1 for 5. Uh, you made your fifth one. Um, geometric probability on the calculator um, is on page 400, so pause and take a look at that right now. That'll make all these problems easier. Um, and your probability is going to be given by this formula here. 
So the probability that y equals a certain number is 1 minus the probability to the power of k minus 1 times p. Probability that our variable equals k. So k here is what gets plugged in up here. Probability here is the probability of success in one trial. Uh, so again, look at page 400 for help on this on the calculator. So if y is geometric random variable, to get the expected value of a geometric random variable, or the uh, mean, we look at 1 over p. That is the expected number of trials we expect to get the first success is 1 over the probability of success in one trial. So that would be the number of trials we'd expect to have. Remember, conditions for binomial calculations are bins. Binary must be two possible outcomes for each trial. Independent trials must be independent of each other. Number of trials must be fixed in advance. Success, the probability of success must, must stay the same throughout all the trials. Um, if they're just very slightly not independent, like when we talked about 10,000 CDs and sampling 10, each time we pull one out, we're not replacing it. So in that case, we're saying it's so close to being independent that we're going to treat it as if it's independent. Um, one thing I'd like to go back over real quick uh, before we go on to your multiple choice is the factorial signs above that I forgot to mention and just refresh your memory. So remember here that 5 factorial in our numerator up here would mean 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial means 2 times 1. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 times 4 is 20 times 3 is 60 times 2 is 120 times 1 is 120. Uh, 5 minus 2 is 3. The factorial of that is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. Times 2 is 12, so we get 120 over 12 here, which equals 10. So again, this tells us the number of ways we can arrange k successes in n trials. So this would be like two heads and five coin flips. There's two, 10 different ways we can do it. So this is a shortcut to finding it rather than writing out the entire sample space um, and having it take more time that way. So keep in mind, just forgot to mention earlier that that's what factorial means in case you need a refresher on that. There's also a factorial button on your calculator, so go ahead and use that. Calculator shortcuts for all these are, are great. Make sure you understand what you're doing, though, uh, so you can explain your calculation as well and you don't just come up with a number and you can't explain it. Um, so again, binomial means bins, binary success failure, independent on each trial, fixed number of trials, probability of success stays the same on each trial, and ge geometric is the same except for instead of the n, the fixed number of trials, we're counting the number of trials to one success. So binomial, we're trying to find a number of successes n and k trials. Geometric, we're trying to find the number of trials it takes to get one success. Let's look at your multiple choice. So I'd like you to tell me which of the following random variables is geometric. Read back over all the requirements for geometric settings. Bits. So A, the number of times I have to roll a die to get two sixes. Um, B, the number of cards I deal from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards until I get a heart. Uh, the number of digits C, the number of digits I read in a randomly selected row of the random digits until I find a sec until I find a seven. Uh, the number of sevens in a row of 40 random digits. E, the number of sixes I get if I roll a die 10 times. Okay, so think about geometric setting bits. Which one of those fall, um, follows all four of those requirements? The possibility it can only be classified as success or failure. Trials are independent, so make sure here that your trials are independent, knowing the result of one trial doesn't have the effect on the result of any other. We're counting the number of trials to one success, and all the probability of success on each must be the same. So look at those five possible answer choices there. A uh, number of times you have to roll to get two sixes. Number of cards you have to deal from well shuffled deck of 52 until you get a heart. The number of digits you read in a randomly selected row of the random digits until you find a seven. The number of sevens in a row of 40 random digits, or the number of sixes you get if you roll a die 10 times. Uh, read back over Chapter 6, Lesson 3. It would be a good idea for you to go back over Lessons 1 and 2 since it's been a little while. Um, and look over all the calculator shortcuts as well.